Let's just say we're going. That's not right. My cup is... It's too big for the cup holder, so it's kind of floating in it. Anyway, hey guys, everyone out there in the YouTubes. My name is Cadence, and uh, this is my corner. This is my coffee in my cup holder that's too small. And uh, this right here is the star of today's show, the Rode Broadcaster. So, as you might be able to tell, this is a microphone. In fact, it's the Rode Broadcaster Large Diaphragm FET Condenser uh, Microphone. And um, it's an end address microphone, meaning you speak into the top of it, not into the side of it, like you would with most large diaphragm condensers. I have a little camera up here so I can show you all the, all the cool things when we get to that, because you may already have noticed that I have not one, but two Rode Broadcasters and an RE320 that's about to roll off the table. So let's put you there and uh, let's examine this a little bit closer and talk a little bit about it. So first, let's just run down the specs a little bit. So as I said, this is an end addressed FET condenser mic with a large diaphragm. It's a one inch uh, diaphragm. It has uh, 14 decibels of A-weighted noise, which is pretty standard, really. It's, it's, it's pretty normal. It's actually probably a little bit lower than average, um, which is good. So uh, the, the noise is low, so that's very nice. It's a cardioid pickup pattern, does not have multiple patterns uh, to select from, which means that um, it records primarily in this direction. Uh, that's my AC. I'll be right back. Yeah. Shut the fu Fire truck. Go. So as I was trying to say before my AC ruined everything, I'm watching you. What was I trying to say? I was trying to say that it's a cardioid pickup pattern, which means that it records primarily in this direction, but it also picks up audio from the sides a little bit. Um, to some degree, you know, the further off you get off axis, and I can demonstrate by just talking and moving to the side of the microphone like this, uh, obviously the worse the pickup is going to get. Uh, but if you're behind the microphone, it's going to reject uh, a lot of sound uh, very effectively. Uh, which is why it's called cardioid, because it's kind of a heart shape when you look at it. It's funny because here in Denmark we actually call it, um, you know, uh, nuya, which is which basically is a kidney, because it looks it actually looks more like a kidney, doesn't it? This microphone is well, it's the Rode Broadcaster. It's built for broadcast use, which is why it has a built-in pop filter. I'm sitting here with another one in my hand. I feel like a feel like a very uh, uh, fortunate individual right now, uh, which I am in some senses. Um, so it has a built-in pop filter. It's not um, it's not perfect. If I get a little bit close to the mic and I say some P's and some B's and uh, you know try and pop it a little bit, I'm being a little bit careful. I'm not um, I'm not uh, you know just blowing out air with every P that um, that that I can possibly you know as much as what am I saying? What I'm saying is I'm actually trying to be a little bit careful with popping the microphone, even though it has a built-in pop filter, so you can hear how effective or not effective that is right now. But I will say I'm a firm believe blah, 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 firm believer that you need two stages of pop killing um, if you want to have an effective solution. Uh, unless you're going to do some other kind of solution, which would be to speak off axis like this. If I speak this way, I could pop as much as I want to really, really emphasize those P's, man. And they're not really going to get picked up by the microphone very much because the air is blowing across this way. But as said, it does have a built in pop filter, which does to some extent eliminate pops. Um, however, and now the, the electro voice is rolling again. <laughs> Gotta be careful with this thing. I'll get back to that in a little bit. If you really want to stop. Now it's rolling the other way. It's, it's brilliant. I know the road broadcaster won't roll because it has a little stop here. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> so, if you want to kill the co uh, the cops, don't kill the cops, guys. I'm pretty sure that's illegal. Okay? No, I'm not incentivizing anything. If you want to kill the pops, you can get yourself a windscreen like this, which fits neatly over the microphone, uh, just like that. Um, but if you're close like this and you're really trying to pop it like this, pop, pop, you know, you can still pop the microphone a little bit, which is where I like to employ a, a very uh, specific strategy to really kill pops very efficiently. So if you have two, two, two stages of pop killing, what you can do is move the windscreen here a little bit off the microphone, creating an air gap 
between where the windscreen ends and where the grill of the microphone begins. And this way you can effectively kill all the pops. Anyway, let's get back to talking about the microphone. So as I said, built-in pop filter, that's all well and good. Um, it can handle uh, a maximum sound pressure level of 128 decibels, which is pretty standard. I mean, there are microphones that can handle 10, 20 dBs higher than that. Um, so you wouldn't use this for recording extremely loud sources, but you can um, to some extent. It does not have any pad switches on it, so you can't lower the sensitivity to uh, record something even louder. But again, this is made for broadcast use. It, it's made for picking up the human voice, um, which is typically not going to exceed 128 decibels sound pressure level. I'm sure you can do that. Is there someone on this planet who can do that? I'm not sure exactly how much that is, but it... No, no, you can't do that. Anyway, as, as, uh, let's move on. Features of this microphone. The whole body here is built of stainless steel. It's quite heavy. In fact, it's actually 577 grams uh, exactly in weight. So it's a pretty heavy microphone. I want you to keep that in mind if you're using a microphone arm like this one right here. Um, I do use a rope broadcaster on this one. Um, it's not on the stand right now because I want to show you things. If you hang it on a, uh, uh, an arm like this, you want to be careful. Make sure that the arm can handle all of that, all of that weight because it is over half a kilogram of weight, which is quite a lot. But anyway, here you can see the microphone. If you look real close, you'll notice that the grill, the grill is, is dented. The grill on this one is dented too. I bought these secondhand. That's why I have two. It's a little bit of a long story why I have two actually. Um, but anyhow, there is the grill. It has, uh, I think it's a dual layered or a double layered or a triple layered grill to reduce popping even further. Um, the body here, stainless steel, as I said, um, it feels good. You know, it feels like a, a properly built microphone. Like I wouldn't want to drop it, but I know that if I drop it, it would probably survive without any uh, big issues. Uh, although it is a condenser microphone, so be careful with it. Okay, they're not, these things are fragile and they don't like moisture, so keep that in mind. Anyway, if you take a look at the body here, you can see there is this what I called kind of a stop earlier, which stops it from rolling, which is not the main purpose of this thing here. There is, in fact, a switch on it right there, as you can see. Um, and when this switch is in the down position like that, you enable a high pass filter. Now that's a high pass filter uh, at 75 hertz, and it's six decibels per octave. I'm not actually 100% sure that it's six decibels per octave, but looking at the frequency response curve that is in the manual, uh, it's it's pretty clearly six decibels per octave. So that's a pretty uh, pretty lenient uh, high pass filter. It's not gonna cut off everything very, very quickly. This mic is built in Australia, by the way. It's not built in China or anything like that. Um, designed and built in Australia. It's a pretty high quality product. Gotta watch out, I don't knock over my delicious coffee here, which I haven't even had a chance to drink yet. So let me look up at my script here. Did I say that out loud? I did, didn't I? While I take a sip of coffee. If you have a very special five pin cable, you can take this microphone and now I can't really show you because I put the damn thing on the mount. Basically, there's a little LED here above this golden ring here, which indicates where you're supposed to speak into the mic, which is from this direction. There's a little uh, LED here, a red LED. It's an on air indicator. And with a special cable, uh, you can essentially uh, hook this up to a mixing console. And whenever you mute the master on it, this uh, LED will stop lighting up and whenever the master is unmuted it will light up so that anyone who's talking into this microphone will know when they're on the air and when they're not uh, which can be pretty handy um, it does not work with a standard XLR cable um, in the sense that the LED is always on when it's receiving power so it's basically just an indicator that yeah the mic has phantom power which it of course needs because it's a condenser microphone um, let's move on and just real quick talk about the frequency response curve um, you can't you can't tell what a microphone is going to sound like just by looking at the frequency response curve, but it does give you some pointers as to uh, how the microphone is designed um, and, uh, well, to some degree, what it's going to sound like. So if you look at the response curve, uh, what you'll find is that there is a around a 4 decibel boost in the low end, around 150, 140 hertz, something like that, um, to gen just to give a gentle boost to that general uh, low end area, which is also where the low end of your average male voice like my own kind of thrives. Um, so that, that four decibel boost is gonna give you some extra low end 
which is really neat for broadcast use um, because we're not talking about like 200, 250 hertz where everything just sounds like mud. We're talking to the deep, the deep bass in the male voice. So this microphone excels at picking up male voices, although I'm sure you could use it on female voices without any issues uh, whatsoever as well. And um, uh, added to the, uh, the low end boost, another thing that kind of gives away that it's a bit of a broadcast um, purpose microphone is the uh, four to five decibel boost in the upper mids around somewhere between one and a half to three, three and a half kilohertz, something like that. Uh, there is a little bit of stuff going on there with a, with a boost. And this is interesting because this is um, an area of the frequency spectrum where human hearing is very active. We hear these particular frequencies um, uh, louder than pretty much the rest of them. Um, and they play into the human voice in terms of articulation. When you boost two and a half kilohertz, for instance, you tend to get um, a more clear uh, enunciation in, in the human voice. So this microphone is tailored to really pick up um, and reproduce a human voice with clarity uh, and uh, an ability to cut through a mix. However, I will say, even though it's four, four to five decibels boost, it doesn't really sound like it's that much because I don't know what Rode have done specifically, um, but those frequencies tend to also sound very harsh. In this microphone, with this with this microphone, they tend to sound kind of smooth. There is a smoothness to the harshness of the frequencies that I can't really put my finger on. And it's hard to explain, um, but I have to say I really I like it a lot. Uh, the extra articulation you get from the boost with the added smoothness, that's just some kind of magic that I can't really... I don't know, I can't put my finger on it. Um, but it's nice, it's really nice. And then there's around a six decibel boost, up around nine kilohertz, uh, a little bit below that and a little bit above that as well, to just give the microphone some extra air um, and really emphasize the qualities you get from uh, having a condenser microphone. And that's the next thing we're gonna talk about. This is a broadcast microphone that is also a condenser microphone. And that's a little bit unusual because if you take a look at classic broadcast microphones throughout the times, you'll for instance take one of the Electro Voice microphones like the RE320. This is kind of a, a modern uh, Electro Voice um, it's very similar to its other two brethren. You'll have the classic RE20 and the slightly less classic RE27, um, both of which are extremely popular and have been extremely popular for a very, very long time in broadcast uh, applications. The RE320 is kind of a middle thing between the two and, and, the, um, and the most affordable of them, by the way. Um, I like this microphone a lot, but it's a large diaphragm dynamic microphone like most broadcast microphones are going to be. Whereas this is a condenser microphone. It's rolling again. It's rolling again. So the fact that this is a condenser microphone has a couple of implications. Um, first and foremost, this microphone is not going to reject the sound of a British room as well as something like this might, right? A condenser microphone is just naturally, by the way, they're designed uh, more sensitive um, well, just more sensitive. So they're going to hear the reflections bouncing around your room um, just inherently more than a dynamic microphone would. Uh, so this microphone is best suited in an acoustically treated environment, which I am not in right now. However, I do have this little corner right here where, you know, I put up some stuff here and there to absorb as many uh, reflections as possible. And also my home isn't extremely um, extremely lively acoustically anyway. So this should be a decent representation of what this might sound like, um, what this might sound like in a home environment where um, you have a good amount of furniture to uh, absorb sound. You don't have a lot of standing waves. You're not living in a, in a tiled home or something like that. My floor is actually tiled, but I have a lot of, uh, of our carpets and such. Anyway, so this microphone is going to be uh, it's going to be less good at rejecting a heatish sounding room than a dynamic microphone will. But it will give you those condenser qualities uh, in terms of just clarity in the top end and uh, sensitivity to very small, fine details, um, which could be what you're looking for, depending on what kind of sound you're, you're really going for. But this will give you a, a broadcasting kind of sound uh, regardless, which I personally define as a microphone with a somewhat recessed mid-range, a little bit of a low-end boost, and a boost up um, in the upper mid-range around those uh, frequencies we talked about earlier, 
that really enhance uh, the articulation in the, in the human voice. It's a very particular kind of tone, but it's very recognizable. This microphone does it very well as well, especially when you flip the kick drum switch on it, but that's a story for another day. So, um, oh yeah, and I just wanted to mention uh, this entire video, all the audio uh, is completely raw, except for a limiter, which is just used to adjust the volume. I'm not really using it for any gain reduction or anything like that. So this is raw audio coming out of the microphone as is. I'm not using the high pass filter. Um, it's a pretty subtle high pass filter. I will say I could turn it on for a sec here. So now the high pass filter is on. It shouldn't sound too much different, but those of you with really good headphones and such could maybe point out that there is a little bit less low end in there. Although again, it's subtle because it's a, it's a high pass filter at 75 Hertz and it cuts off at just six decibels per octave, which is uh, not very egregious. So nice low cut filter. I like that or high pass. It's probably better to call it a high pass. Now Rode themselves on their website state, and I quote, its rich, full quality tailored response has an emphasized proximity effect that has made it a standard in radio stations the world over. So we're going to put that to the test. I'm going to say that sentence again, but this time I'm going to get really close. Its rich, full quality tailored response has an emphasized proximity effect that has made it a standard in radio stations the world over. I may have clipped the mic on a couple of occasions there. But there is a demonstration of what the proximity effect might sound like on this mic. Um, and it does. It does have quite a pronounced proximity effect, I would say, uh, to its detriment or to the betterment of whoever's using it. Depends on what you like uh, and how you like to work the microphone. So I guess um, to kind of round this off, this is a very special broadcast microphone because it doesn't really look like any of the other classics we know, like the RE20 or the Sennheiser MD421, the Shure SM7, the Heil microphones. Am I forgetting any? I put them up here. There's the Rode Procaster, which is a, a very affordable uh, microphone that's uh, quite similar, by the way, to the Electro Voice uh, RE320 in some respects anyway. I would say this microphone has a good low end pickup and it represents the human voice in a pretty flattering way. Um, especially male voice. I haven't personally tried it on female voice yet. Haven't had the opportunity, um, but um, it's certainly, I would say it's certainly made mostly for uh, male voices, male voice pickup. Um, it has great clarity and it has a smooth sounding upper mid um, thing going on, which I can't quite put my finger on, but I like it. And um, uh, in addition to that, there's lots of air on top, that six decibel boost up at nine kilohertz or so. Um, really brings out the qualities that um, the fact that this is a condenser microphone provides. Um, so I hope you uh, enjoyed listening to me speak into this microphone for this entire video. And um, yeah, tell me what you think below and uh, tell me what I should take a look at next. I have a little bit of a mic collection at this point and I was thinking of doing videos like these where I just describe them, their design features, how they came about or uh, what their use is and whatnot, uh, as well as um, talk about how I think they sound on my own voice anyway. And um, in terms of that, I think this microphone is quite nice. What do you think? Leave your comments down below. Leave a like if you please. I'm going to go drink the rest of my coffee here before it gets cold. By the way, it tastes really good. It's very nice. Got a, you know, I just, I just got an espresso for, uh, for Christmas that you saw in the intro. Um, and it's, 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 it's lovely. I absolutely love it. It's just, mm, coffee, oh, coffee, mm, mm. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Ah, that's right. My name is Cadence. Thank you for uh, stopping by and watching this video and listening to me talking to this microphone for uh, a little over 20 minutes. I'll probably cut this down a little bit. <laughs> I'll see you guys on the down low next time. Or I, I don't know what that means. I'll see you guys later. Next one. Have a good video. Next video. Have a good... Hey, goodbye.